All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a bunch of crypto news stuff for you as usual. Let's just jump right into it. What to expect when you're expecting highlight circumcision controversy? Uh, wait, 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 wait. This this was this was my own research. It's a really good movie. Uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, what to expect when Ethereum's Constantinople hard fork happens? So Constantinople hard fork is coming pretty soon. January 16th is its expected arrival date. And it upgrades a number of things. I would say mostly for developers. There's a little tiny worry that not many people have upgraded the nodes just yet. Um, but... It seems like most people will upgrade by the time the fork arrives. So if it doesn't, could create different chains. There's already some Ethereum hard fork scams out there. I already covered one of them on my channel a few days ago where they want you to send your private keys and your Ethereum to them so that you can get your hard fork. And I'm sure that's going to happen. Don't do that. Uh, one of the things about it is that uh, it delays the difficulty bomb, an algorithm in Ethereum uh, that increases mining difficulty over time time and because the upgrade will decrease the mining difficulty it also takes steps to reduce the reward miners are given for securing the network down from three to two ethereum per block so instead of uh, a rising difficulty that is sort of scheduled in ethereum it's going to lower that difficulty but lower the block as well so if you are a GPU miner, uh, it's going to hurt quite a bit because there's a lot of ASICs and FPGAs on Ethereum right now. And from a block from three to two is pretty significant. And Ethereum, um, you know, GPU miners are already sort of suffering as it is and may have already moved on to a lot of other algorithms. And that's pretty clear in the Ethereum hash rate, how it's just going down regardless of the ASICs going on it. So I feel like most of that decrease uh, in the Ethereum uh in the ethereum hash rate is likely gpus and not necessarily people unplugging asics so now uh it's definitely mostly asics for sure so it gives an array of upgrades um and they're mostly for developers so you know one of the uh, upgrades is a simple quality of life improvement for contract development um another one is um a net gas metering uh which is going to improve one of ethereum's ongoing Un uh, usability issues, uh, which is using way too much gas and increasing gas prices. So you're just going to have to continue more and more Ethereum. Uh, so it's going to try and solve that a little bit. And again, there's some other um, other upgrades that are mostly for developers, like expecting to pave the way for new kinds of layer two scaling solutions, etc. But one of the big things uh, is, again, the minor debate, uh, it's because one of the main aspects of Constantinople is a delay for what is known as the difficulty bomb alongside an aforementioned technical features before. Uh, originally intended to smooth the transition to Ethereum's upcoming consensus switch proof of stake, the difficulty bomb is an algorithm that increases uh, that incrementally increases the time it takes to produce new blocks. So eventually, the bomb forces the blockchain into what is a state as the ice age, during which time the difficulty becomes so high that transactions can no longer be confirmed. As such, the algorithm has uh, the benefit of encouraging frequent code changes in order to modify it. So the main importance of Constantinople is to delay that difficulty bomb. Otherwise, mining difficulty would start climbing up sharply. Other than that, there's not many changes that are really particularly crucial. Um, to that end, uh, Constantinople... Um, decreases the mining block rewards from three ethereum to two ethereum a move that sparked controversy with the blockchain's miners that depend on the rewards to keep their mining business profitable so basically for hobbyist miners for gpus and stuff that's going to be pretty crushing uh you know a, a gigantic block decrease like that so you know from three to two is pretty uh is pretty big it's not quite 50 percent but it's still a good chunk and, uh, you know, GPU people, uh, miners, I suppose, are already suffering when it comes to Ethereum and may have already moved on. So if ProgPow comes out here soon, that is going to essentially brick current ASICs and sort of brick FPGAs. However, FPGAs are reprogrammable and one could probably find some kind of way or software or something like that that would stay on track with ProgPow and be able to keep up. Uh, so that's going to make it so that GPUs, the hash rate is going to seriously dump um because all the asics are now going to be essentially bricked once prog pal comes out if it does um and then your gpu profits will go back so there should be still some probably some fpgas or something 
on the network, uh, but um, they might have a hard time trying to keep up with ProgPow as well. So the GPU mining should come back to somewhat normal, although the two Ethereum per block is also going to hurt it just a little bit. But um, better to get rid of those ASICs than not. So I, uh, I brought this article up because I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, Vinny Lingham forecasts Bitcoin price for two months trading between $3,000 and $5,000. Wow, what a great price prediction. So I've been kind of on a, a kick lately of, of just kind of being um, just very skeptical of everyone's price predictions and of everyone's TA uh, because none of it ever comes out to be true. If, the, if, I mean, if you see somebody practicing TA and they got a big following and they're not a millionaire or a billionaire, then they're wrong. They, they you know, Because if you're that good at TA, you, you don't need to be teaching it. You, you should have millions uh, because you're so good at TA, aren't you? But no, it never turns out to be the case. So no, nobody can predict the price, not even remotely. I know some people, I, I get it, like TA doesn't predict the exact time that it's going to go up and stuff but it, it doesn't it just doesn't work nobody's ever correct nobody's ever correct 100 percent of the time and if you can't be correct 100 percent of the time that's not a quantifiable science okay it's just it's just a horse you're just reading your horoscope when you're doing that so Vinny lingham ceo of blockchain identity platform civic has revised his short-term bitcoin price prediction on january 11th um saying that it, it telling financial news network that it could fall below 3000 so he says it could fall below 3000 in an interview lingham had previously forecast btc to trade between 3000 and 6000 in the coming months and that the market could either break out or break down so this is what i'm saying guys this this is exactly what i'm saying like you can't you can't just say 3000 to 6000 cuz we're already in 3000 to 6000 right so that's just like wow i'm a real special person uh, saying what what it's already in that's if if i said three thousand to six thousand you'd be like what does that even mean i mean that's such a that's that's such a huge amount and we're already trading within that anyway and then uh to, to, after that the market's either going to break out or break down yeah it's going to do one of the two it's either going to go up or it's going to go down that's what that's what i'm talking about with these predictions and ta people Oh yeah, no, no, no. The, the 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 it's going down here, and we'll put my squiggly line and my little square right here, and it's either going to go up or down from this point. Wow, what great information! It's either going to or it's not going to. Uh, amazing. Wow, what great insight. Um, but now he says the reality it'll probably trade sideways between three thousand and five thousand. Ooh, nice revision, Vinny. Very. Mm, on point saucy for another month or two while it's trying to figure out which way to go when it finds that direction there'll be a breakout or a breakdown mm, let's see which way could it go up or down and i'll just it, so it's a 50 50 so what i'm gonna do to be right as i'm gonna throw boom both of them on the table bitcoins you ask me what what bitcoin's gonna do it's either gonna go up or it's gonna go down bam put them both on the table i'm right either way yeah 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 very clever three thousand to five thousand another month eh, i'll take out that six thousand because i'm not so sure about that let's do three thousand to five thousand see if i'm right it just get it out of here you know uh, moving on, uh, Indian Bank is forcing customers to agree to anti-crypto policy. So now I know most of my viewers are probably not in India, but India is, well, geographically a very, very large country in the same way that China was, or is. Um, uh, but back in September of 2017, China was like, eh, exchanges aren't legal in China. And the, the price of Bitcoin bombed from 5,000 to 3,000. That's a very major, huge country with a lot of people that are willing to buy in, mine, etc., cetera, uh, trade uh, crypto. And so is India, um, quite large as well. Uh, I think it was India the second biggest or the first uh, largest uh, in terms of population. Either way, one of those two, right? Because I could just say that, right? Bitcoin uh, is either going to go up or down, right? So I could just put them both on the table. It's either the first or the second. It doesn't matter. I don't need facts. Um, but it's it's huge, right? And if everybody is allowed to uh, trade cryptocurrency and buy cryptocurrency, then the price of cryptocurrency is going to go up because their population is enormous. And this is what I'm saying, how, yes, you a government cannot stop cryptocurrency. It's very difficult to do that uh, unless they you block all the, it, it, like, again, it's very difficult. So you can't really just eliminate it. Uh, and people are always saying, oh, you can't stop blockchain, you can't stop Bitcoin, you can't stop Bitcoin. And no, you can't. They're right in some way. Yet on the other end, you certainly can. If the, if the United States government or the UK or Germany or other any other major country in the world says, hey, uh, cryptocurrency is illegal. You, like, you will be arrested or you will be fined or your money will be 
be taken if you if you trade cryptocurrency and the banks will go along with the government as well so that's going to be a major shock to most of the people most people are going to go and eh, this is too much of a pain anymore i don't want to have to go through all these different routes to have to get it uh you know i don't want to have to circumvent everything like that you know the government's rules so that's what happened in china i mean the, the price dumped people people dumped and immediately and a lot of people still try it uh but it's very difficult for most people so um Again, so India's banks are going along with this crypto ban, and uh, one thing that they're saying is uh, that you have to agree to not use Bitcoin. Uh, so here's the the picture. Here is a basis. Uh, the regulations issued by RBI hereby declare that I will not deal any transactions related to the cryptocurrency, including Bitcoins. Um, I also understand and agree that the bank reserves all the right to close my account without further information in case I'm found to undertake such transactions. So you basically just close your bank account um, if you trade or buy or are caught dealing with cryptocurrency. So again, that's not a that's not an outright like that cryptocurrency can't be used. Um, and sure, you could be like, well, screw the banks. I'm just going to use cryptocurrency. But it, it, that's easier said than done for most people. Um, and again, that's all a government has to do to essentially eliminate cryptocurrency. Really, that's all they have to do is just say, hey, it's not legal or or banks go along with it, etc. And it, it'll, it'll kill the price. Um, so this isn't too good at all. Um, hopefully, India turns around sooner or later because India is a massive, massive, massive country with a lot of people eager uh, for uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, same thing with China. China, although people still do, uh, this just the exchanges are kind of gone, and that was a huge price boost for crypto for a while there, and then a huge price sundering went from five thousand to three thousand uh, within a few days of that announcement uh, back in September 2017. Uh, so moving on, former BitTorrent executive says there's no way its token can run on Tron. So Tron bought BitTorrent, and they're going to make a BitTorrent token. Uh, it's it kind of makes sense what they're doing. They want a decentralized internet, and what's the biggest way to do that? Essentially, BitTorrent, which is a connection of 100 million plus computers uh, running BitTorrent and giving each other individual pieces of torrents. It's actually kind of genius. I'm gonna have to give that to Tron. However, Tron is a lot of fluff and a lot of announcements and a lot of kind of nothing for the most part, um, and that's fairly. Uh, fairly true a uh, slight bias in there but for the most part uh it's uh, a little interesting a little um weird so um basically um the skeptical case against btt uh, bittorrent token is simple bittorrent has been running just fine without a token for more than a decade was this just another shitcoin a token that uh, provided no re real utility extracting a few bucks from credulous investors uh, to find out more breaker reached out to a number of current and former tron execs we didn't hear back from Noel, but we did hear from Simon Morris, who spent nearly a decade as an executive at BitTorrent. Most recently, uh, Morris was uh, BitTorrent's chief executive officer. He said, initially, it was just, hey, there's a crazy bubble going on. Let's join in, Morris admits. But he and his team, which he says was composed of some of the best engineering talent that has passed through uh, BitTorrent over the years, discovered that there would be some serious utility tokenization, uh, tokenizing their software. Automated auctions to prioritize download queues, Boris says, uh, could make the entire BitTorrent uh, network as much as 40% faster. Well, for some people with a prioritized auctions, if you, I guess, win that auction, I don't know what that means, but 40% uh, faster maybe for you. Now, Tron says uh, it will implement something like what Morris conceptualized. There's only one problem, according to Morris. There's a way the Tron blockchain can handle the transaction volume needed to tokenize BitTorrent. And Morris thinks there's little reason to believe Tron's claims about BitTorrent token or anything else. He says, it seems like they're going in the same direction uh, as our plan, Morris told Breaker. But uh, what's very clear is that what they're going to say, uh, they're going in the same direction. Come on, what what may, uh, because that's what Tron does. Uh, it's basically a marketing machine layered on a very thin veneer of technology. Morris would know, as BitTorrent CSO during and after the acquisition, Morris says, uh, he visited Tron operations in China and spent a, a decent amount of time with Sun. Of Sun, Morris says, it's very clear that Justin is very strong at marketing. He has a uh, very nice personality from a marketing point of view. He doesn't have a technical bone in his body. He wouldn't understand technically anything. But the approach that bothered me was the very sort of Trumpian approach. If you get caught in a lie, the answer is you double down on that lie. The endless uh, doubling down on lies made me think it wasn't going to be a fit. Um, so uh, it basically goes on to to say like why um 
you know, it says it was very clear when I was at Bitcoin that there was no way the transaction capacity of Tron would work, says Boris, sounding more bemused than angry. Uh, the transactional capacity we were looking at was needing hundreds of, of transactions a second just to get started. It's simply not there. You hear all this uh, BS out there. Oh, this does 10,000 transactions a second. It's all crap. We were going to melt Tron, literally destroy it. Why then does Boris think Tron is ignoring this obvious barrier? Again, he suspects a blurry line between marketing and outright deception. He says, I suspect what they're really going to do is they'll do it on some central server. They'll wave their hands and say, oh, it's a lightning network for Tron or something and pretend it's Tron based, but it's not really Tron based. Morris has also continued to work on blockchain projects after leaving BitTorrent, also through Coldwater and Tron's broader technical claims. All the nonsense about, oh, it's the best blockchain ever. It's better than Ethereum. It's not. It's a fork of Ethereum. Uh, they didn't even bother to apply the security update subsequently. Uh, this barring was for a time uh, not acknowledged by Tron. So the alleged plausibility of Tron's plans for BitTorrent token is particularly disappointing because the idea for tokenizing BitTorrent that Morris developed is so clever. BitTorrent works by breaking up big files into pieces as they're downloaded by a swarm of machines, which in turn pass the file on to others. And uh, its efficiency is determined in large part by number which members of a downloading swarm get files first. If users with the fastest internet connections get their downloads first, they can then seed the file, making them available for other downloaders and in turn letting everyone else download faster. So that's kind of what they're talking about here is that if you have like a faster connection, um, you know, the, it, they might want to give it to you first in an auction style. Maybe if you have more BTT than another person, you will get those um, first. Or maybe if you seed more files to another person, you get BTT. Nobody knows how this is going to work. It's a good idea, admittedly, but again, Tron is just sort of a marketing master and, you know, master company, but do they really have the technology to deal with BitTorrent? I don't think so. The amount of transactions of BitTorrent is unbelievable. The amount of data just flowing, all the little individual bits, and I don't think any cryptocurrency can handle that. You would kind of need a centralized server for that sort of thing um, and how this is going to work. So I'm somewhat skeptical of this and how this is going to all work, but uh, still glad to see it happening. Glad to see, you know, at, at least some movement in the crypto world in general. It doesn't really matter what crypto, as long as we're making some kind of movements. Coin market cap, 123 billion. Bitcoin dominance up to 52.4%, meaning, uh, you know, Bitcoin went up a little bit more. Didn't dive as a little bit more because we're, we're around that area. We were down to 51% for a little while there. Um, so Bitcoin, always that number one. Um, Ripple did take over Ethereum, I think, the other day. Uh, not by much. You can see about $400 million or so there, uh, maybe close to five. And um, everything's looking pretty good. But Tron, as you can see, uh, dumped pretty good. It was up to some like 33 cents or something like that and went to 25. Uh, but uh, nothing crazy to report. Still 123 billion market cap and no big movement just yet. I think we're still waiting on back futures for that and seeing what's going to happen with all that. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, make sure you go in the description of the video, and I have my social media in there, my Twitter, my Steam, my Twitch. Make sure you follow them if you can. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and as usual, I will see you guys next time.